Hello knitters! I hope you already enjoyed your new Lopa Pace sweater we wore knitting just recently and now you're ready for another project. This time I decided to knit myself a trendy hoodie that will suit well in the cold time. There is no any particular yarn is required, you can knit it from any yarn you like, alpaca wool, mohair, cotton, acryl, you can mix them, it's all up to you. I take you one of the simplest way of knitting to show you the main idea, but in the future I think we can take something fancier. My hat is about 52 cm wide, the length is 43 cm, it sits tight on the hat. If you want to have it more spacious, add a couple of centimeters more. I don't want to recommend any yarn in particular, as there is a lot of brands all around the world with high quality products, but I noticed that mainly alpaca wool or merino wool mixed with the thin mohair works well. The same as triple thread of mohair or similar yarns that is soft and gentle. Remember that besides keeping you warm, it has to be not irritating for the skin. Feel free to choose a yarn you like and uh, which suits your preference and your design. Here you can see some samples I had knitted for myself. I highly recommend making samples before you start any project because it gives you an idea how the final product will look like. I have a container with the yarn leftovers and want to use something from there. I choose this mix of two colors, yarn which I bought in the central market of Kathmandu, poor wool. I was using needle size uh, 6 mm to make this sample and find it perfect for my project. Now I am measuring my sample. 10 cm of width contains 14 stitches, it means that every centimeter is 1.4 stitches. For my balaclava I need short circle needles or double pointed needles, both options will work well, I take uh, 6 mm. Then I need a plastic needle or crochet to join the upper part of the balaclava and one marker. Some uh, additional needles might be helpful at some stages too. Now I uh, can calculate how many stitches I need to cast on to start my hoodie. 52 cm right hoodie, I multiply 1.4 stitches and get 72.8 stitches altogether. Because I start with the rib, I need an even number, therefore I will cast on 72 stitches, plus one to join the round. You can use any method you want to cast on stitches. I use the one I like with the stretchy looking edge. If you like this one, check the video of my tutorial where I explain how to make this kind of rib. The link you can find now in the right corner and uh, also in the description below. Otherwise, you just cast on your number of stitches on the needles you're going to use. After I get all stitches on my needles, I place the marker at the beginning and knit 10-15 cm of rib. I'll also make some rows of knitting before start forming our hoodie. After I get all stitches on my needles, I need 10-15 cm of rib. I will also make some rows of knitting before start forming our hoodie. And that's what I've got so far. I'm going to leave an opening of 5 cm. In my case, 5 cm equal to 7 stitches. As I still need an even number, I take 8 instead. 
Then I subtract uh, 8 from 72 and get 64. I divide them in 2 and get 32. It means I need to need 32 stitches now. Bind off 8 stitches and afterward I keep knitting the rest of 32 stitches until I finish the row. First I need 32 stitches. Here I come to the 8 stitches which I need to bind off. I see that it will be difficult to knit 2 stitches together the way I want them to be and therefore I need to turn them or you can say rotate a bit to the open side uh, like this and then knit together. Then I turn the next one, turn that one which is already on my right needle and knit them together too. This way I bind off 8 stitches. If your stitches are already turned by the open side, you just bind them off as they are. Then I start needing stocking stitches and need to decrease some stitches to make the opening of the hoodie roundish. As I start from the wrong side, I move the first stitch to the right needle, do a purl stitch and pull this stitch through the first one. This way I decrease one stitch. Then I continue to knit until the end of the row and turn the knitting. Here I do another decrease, I move the first stitch and then do a neat stitch because I'm on the right side and pull this stitch through the first. That's how I've decreased the stitch on the other side of my balaclava. Then I need all stitches until the end of the row. In this case the last stitch is a neat stitch. I will do the same once more, one decreasing on the wrong side and one on the right side, the same way. Move the first stitch to the right needle, one purl stitch, pull the stitch through the first one, knit until the end. Finish with the purl stitch, turn the knitting. Move the first stitch, do a knit stitch and pull the stitch through the first. Knit until the end of the row. Finish with a knit stitch. Altogether I decrease the middle 8 stitches plus 4 stitches from both sides, 12 in total. You have your number. I keep knitting stocking at rows until I reach about 25-27 cm in height. At this point you can even try it on your head already to adjust the size. The biggest part has been done, now I have 25 cm in height. However, I still need to form the back of the hoodie to make it look a bit roundish. Now in total I have 60 stitches. I divide this number into two and place there my marker. 
The plan is to decrease stitches evenly on both sides. Do this I will need until I have 5 stitches left before the marker. 5 stitches left, here I do a decrease. I move the first stitch to the right needle, knit the next one and pull one through another. And finish all stitches until the marker. After the marker I am mirroring the idea having 3 stitches and then knit 2 stitches together. This way both decrease I incline toward the center. The next row is just purling. I do repeat the same next knitting row, decreasing stitches on both sides. Afterward, a purling row without changes. Entirely, I do this four times. I also want to show you another way to decrease stitches. It works better if you have thin a yarn or want to have the corner more roundish. I'm going to make a show sample to demonstrate the method. I start with dividing the whole row in two and set a mark in the middle. First row, I do knitting until I have three stitches left until the marker. I decrease one stitch, knitting the next two together. One knit stitch, marker, one knit stitch, then I turn two next stitches and knit them together left to right. Keep knitting until the end of the row. Row 2, I do purling the whole row. Row 3, I do 2 decreases on both sides of the marker the same way as I did the first row. Row 4, purl row with 2 decreases. I come to the point where I have 3 stitches left before the marker. Then I make a purl stitch out of uh, 2 stitches. 1 purl stitch, marker, 1 purl stitch. Next I turn 2 stitches the way they are open to me. Stretch uh, their back sides to make it easier to knit them together and I do a purl stitch starting from the second stitch, like this. You can see that they repeat the same pattern on the right side inclining towards the center. The next row is row 5, repeat decreasing stitches on both sides following the skin. To bind off the top of my balaclava I need a plastic needle. To make an idea clear and obvious I release some stitches to show you how they should look to bind them off properly. First of all they are not twisted so you can see the loop which is open to you. I insert the needle into the first loop downward and to the next loop upward, connecting them. I do the same with the first loops on the opposite side. Then 
Then I go back to the upper part and insert the needle into the same loop downward and to the next one upward. This way loops are getting connected. The same is on the opposite side again, downward upward movement. Step by step I see that this linking thread is almost invisible because repeating the same way as all stitches do. In the end, I have to hide the thread inside. This method is a bit easier than the previous one, but here I need crochet. First of all, I turn out my knitting, placing right side face to face with an equal number of stitches on each side. I take my needle and move the first stitches of each side on the crochet and pull the thread through them. It doesn't matter which side I hook first. I repeat the same, taking one stitch from each needle, but this time I pull the thread through three stitches together. All next stitches I do the same until I have the last stitch. The last one I will just pull out and hide. That's how it looks after binding off, not that invisible, but still neat. By the way, this is how it looks with another yarn, and in my opinion, it looks great. If you don't have a crochet, you can take any other knitting needle you have. The basic idea is the same. Turn out the knitting, place it face to face with an equal number of stitches, take an additional needle. I move one stitch to another needle and knit them together. The next two go the same way. Additionally, I pull the stitch through the first one. The same way I do the whole row. I understand that everyone prefers its way of knitting. The most important and all this decreases is that your stitches are not twisted. If you have your stitch twisted, just turn it the other way and binding off will go smooth and easy.
The result is almost the same as with the crochet on the right side, but has a lower edge on the wrong side. Now I want to make a rip around the opening. For this purpose I need to leave stitches along the edge. I take my thread and start from the top. You see here is the very edge looks like a chain. I don't use uh, edge loops uh, but the next ones where it's easy to recognize each row. I need to leave two stitches, skip one, two stitches, skip one until I get the whole round. The tricky part is to leave stitches from the curved part. Here I have to look both at stitches along the edge and vertical rows. My tip is to look approximately at the distance between stitches you had previously and keep the same if you are hesitating which one to lift. You can see my first attempt quite obvious that I lifted too many on the right side, so I'm going to redo it. Now all stitches on my needles and I do simple rip, one knit, one purl stitch. I'm already satisfied with the width of the rib and can bind it off using my needle. If you have sick yarn or want to finish your balaclava at this point, find the link in the corner to the short tutorial on how to bind off elastically. There's also a link in the description below. If your yarn is soft and compliant, you can definitely make a double rib and that's exactly what I'm going to show you next, even if I'm not going to use it myself. For double rib, I need to make the rib two times wider. I got 6-7 centimeters. 
To connect with the other side, I take an additional needle and start lifting stitches from the opposite side of the rib. The point is to lift stitches exactly from the same rows that you have already lifted. Remember, before we lifted them, not from every stitch. In the end, it has to be the same amount of stitches. But uh, don't worry if you realize that you missed some or took up the wrong one. You will have a chance to fix it later. Next step, I connect both sides. For this, I take one stitch from one side, move it to another needle and knit them together. The first ones could be a bit tricky to knit. I take one stitch from one side, move it to another needle and knit them together. And I pull the second stitch through the previous one. On the way I check stitches to make sure that they belong to the same row and I'm not missing any. I do the whole row binding off stitches and connecting both sides of the rib. As you see my yarn is way too thick to make a double rib. It simply looks uh, too much, but uh, with the soft yarn it will look very nice and natural. Don't forget to hide all ends of the thread. I finished my balaclava and ready to try it on. I hope you enjoyed watching this tutorial and see that the balaclava is very easy to knit and easy to adjust to your preferences. Send your like and subscribe to this channel to get even more tutorials I'm going to make for you. See you next video!